Well, welcome to Capernaum. Did you ever think you'd be sitting in a synagogue where Jesus preached? No. It's, I know it's busy and all those crowds, I know it can be crazy, but you're still, you're in a synagogue where Jesus preached. Uh, the Gospels tell us that he went all over the, the Galilee and he preached in, in Capernaum, Bethsaida, he preached in all these villages, but this really was his, his home base. And we come here because we want to be where he was. Again, did he step here? Most likely not. This is a rebuilt synagogue, okay? The original one is just below us. And if you go back outside, you'll see... Did Shmuel tell you this already? I don't want to repeat. Okay. Um, you'll see like a, like a black base. That's a basalt stone. That was the original synagogue. It was destroyed and then rebuilt by the Byzantines. This white stone was imported from, from Europe. And, and they build it in, in, the, same, in the same manner. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long because I know it's hot, but there's a story that takes place here in the New Testament that we don't always understand the significance of it. So let me just take a minute and explain it. It's got to do with Jairus. You remember this name, Jairus? He was the leader of what? Of the synagogue. Where? In Capernaum. He was the leader here. He lived right outside here because the priest or the rabbi had to be nearby so he could perform his duties and be close by. And it's interesting that when Jesus is brought or when he comes here to Capernaum, he's met by Jairus and Jairus says, will you come pray for, for my daughter? Interesting, even though people are saying he's the Messiah and they're not supposed to believe he's the Messiah, when he had a need, he was willing to give him a shot. And that happens to us. You know, God, yeah, whatever, whatever. Tragedy strikes. Okay, God, where are you? Right? We cry out. And Jairus just wanted, he loved his little girl. He was a dad and he wanted to see her healed. And if this guy from Nazareth, from the nothing town of Nazareth, just over here, if he can do it, what do I got to lose? My daughter's sick anyways. And so he says, will you come pray for her? And he says, yes, I will. And as they're walking, because he enters into the village here, and as they're walking to the house, the incident with a woman with the issue of blood takes place. Remember that? Okay, without going into the whole backstory of her, she's unclean. She's impure because of her bleeding. And that means everyone she touches and everyone who's touched by her becomes unclean. That's a really important part of the story. Because she comes up behind Jesus and she touches the hem of his garment, right? So then Jesus says, woman, get up. Because she touches him, Jesus is now considered unclean according to the law of Moses. And I know that we're not used to thinking of Jesus as being unclean. But Galatians said that he was born under the law to rescue us from the law. But he himself was still under law. He was observant. He would have followed after the rules of the laws of Moses and the laws of the land. And so because he's considered unclean, that really affects the story. Because after he heals the woman and he's made unclean, they continue to the house of Jairus. But what happens? They're met by the messengers who say, don't bother the master anymore. I'm sorry, but your daughter has passed away. She's died. And Jesus says, no, she's only asleep, right? Let's go. Now for us, he goes into the room, he takes her by the hand and he says, little girl, get up, right? There's a major problem with that story if you're Jewish. You're not allowed to go near a dead body. Yeah. You're not allowed to touch a dead body. So why is Jesus, this rabbi, this famous rabbi, who's got the swarms of people following him, why is he touching uh, the body of a dead person? Watch the sovereignty of God. On the way in, remember the woman touched him? She made him what? Unclean. And because he was unclean, he was able to continue and to go into the room where there was a body, that he was able to touch the body and raise it back to life. Now, the people didn't believe it was the Messiah. If you saw somebody raise someone from the dead, wouldn't you kind of go, wow, that's pretty cool, right? Or maybe you'd say something better, but they don't react. Because in Judaism, the belief was in those days that after a person died, that their spirits would remain over their body for three nights and three days. And on the morning of the fourth day, the spirit would leave and be gone forever. So resurrection was possible within the first three days, but not on the fourth day and beyond. So that's very interesting, isn't it? Because Jesus raises her from the dead and they're like, that's cool, but it's not like, wow, cool, because she hasn't been dead three days. And then he's in Jerusalem and he gets word that his friend Lazarus is sick. Remember Lazarus? What does he do when they tell him that he's sick? Wait. He waits. He does nothing. And if you don't know the culture and the belief, 
you think, that's not a very nice thing to do. What kind of a friend was he? And they come back and again and they say, listen, he's died. He's like, okay. And he sticks around for another couple days. But then the Bible says that he shows up in Bethany on what day? Why does he show up on the fourth day? Because resurrection was possible within the first three days. And if he showed up within that time frame, they would have said, it's a good miracle, but it's not a messianic miracle. It's not a crazy miracle. So he waits to the morning of the fourth day when it's impossible. And by the fact he shows up on the fourth day, people would have said, oh, nice guy. He's come to visit to sit Shiva with the family. Nobody ever thought for a second that he was going to pray because it's the fourth morning. There's no way that he can be resurrected. So when Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth, and they roll away the stone and he comes back to life, they lost their minds. They had never seen that in Israel. He had done what was called a messianic miracle. He did the impossible. And the same thing happens with Jesus. How many days and nights is he in the tomb? Three nights, three days. Early on the morning, after three nights and three days, he's resurrected from the dead. Why? Because then only God himself would be able to resurrect the dead. And so when we come to Israel and we come to a place like Capernaum and we start to learn a little bit about the culture, the Bible, the stories of the Bible, the people of the Bible, the God of the Bible comes more alive. Would you agree?